from that. So like 1 a.m. all the way through like four and a half hours of this meeting. And then I had a class. And then my wife was like, I came in from my class and my wife was like, what are you doing? I was like, listen, I'm going to get two hours of sleep. I know I, I, I'll be good. I'll get two hours of sleep. And then I'm going to, I got Andrew and Father Turbo. And she's like, wow. Yeah, she was looking at me like she had. She started getting tears in her eyes, like it was stressing her out. Really? Like, Where are you? <laughs> are you a, do you do you need a lot of sleep or something? Oh, no, not at all, not at all. But I think she was like, it was like she was sympathizing. Oh, gosh. like if it was okay. her, you know what I mean? She was imagining herself in the situation. I. She started weeping. Okay, hi everyone and welcome to Royal Pass. I am your host Andrew and Cyprian and Father Turbo have a reaction video or a video that they want to show um, and we are all going to react to it. It originally was going to be a, a pretty awesome drum solo that I was going to have Father react to but it turns out he's already watched it and then this video is better so we're going to roll with this. I have not seen this video by the way. Oh yeah so it's just from Father. Yes, so I have not seen father's it. having us react to it. Okay. Cyprian, hit it. Here we go. Stop me if the audio or video is not great. Okay. Yeah. Pascha, Господня Пасха, о смерти Бог жизни, о земли к небеси, Христос Бог наш в невене, по веною поющиня. Бог сади агиан, наставший судилие, очистив чувстве я и озрим, Не преступне света воскресения, Христа вписающийся, И радуйтесь, Олегуща, Я смута услышу, Победную поющую. Слава Господи Святому Господи, Слава Отцу и Сыну и Святому Богу, you know where this is at father yeah it's a russian russian sounds like russian and it's it's a Pos posca song it's got to be Wow. I, I wonder, I wonder if it would be interesting if any of our it's definitely Russian 
or something it's Serbian. Serbian. It's, it, oh, is it Serbian? Yeah, it's Serbian. Yeah, because he was saying Christo Vas Chris, yeah, right? It's so it's so the Serbian chant is more Byzantine like that. Yeah, the Serbs the Serbs rule because it's this perfect blend of the Slavic and oh, the Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Perfect blend. Oh, I gotta get on that, man. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what oh yeah. man. I'm yeah, I'm that, so that, into that. Yeah, that young man, he's got the voice of like an elder. He just sounds like that's what old, I was gonna say. An old he, elder. He, yeah, it's incredible. If stuck him in a lineup, I would have never picked him out as being yeah. the that was singing that. Or and it's great because it's his whole being. You know, mm -hmm. everything in him is is worshiping. It's wonderful. Good. The the interesting thing is that his like it 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 does like I didn't think that it was him at first right so I assumed it was like an elder singing but what's interesting is that so for people who couldn't who couldn't uh, see it's a a boy it seems he's got cerebral palsy or something yeah. mm -hmm. something like that right and what's interesting is like you could hear the you could you could hear that like oh this is like he's got cerebral palsy like you could sort of hear that in his in his voice that that was coming through but at the same time there was something kind of like perfect about it i don't know it's very hard to explain like that it's almost like it's meant to yeah, be yeah that yeah exactly yeah, yeah i would agree with that wholeheartedly right like like it was like it's like yeah that's the way that this works mm -hmm. it's just this yeah. yeah, there's something very, very powerful in that. Yeah, it's meant to be. Man. Hmm. Well, wow. I'm going to change the subject real quick. It, it, I honestly thought it was going to be a healing video, like a video of a miracle or something. At first, like that. I thought that. Too. You see a kid in a church with, you know, he's got a crutch or a cane. I'm not sure exactly what that's called, a crutch of some sort. And you thought, oh, okay, well, steal, gird your loins because this is going to kind of rock my reality a little bit. But then when I realized it was enchanting, I was just like, oh no, this is, this is amazing. Like I would listen to that all day long, mm -hmm. like as much as the enemy allowed me to. Can I would I absolutely. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. I didn't hear what you said, father. Uh, can I say something which yeah, is yeah, kind yeah. of crazy? Yeah. Please. It's, it's, it's almost better than a healing video. Yeah. Because it's not spectacle. Well, it's not just not. It, yes, it's not spectacle, but it's also um, the deeper thing of, of embracing and accepting who and what you are, and the beauty in that. And he said, "Not that, wow. not that miracles of healing aren't beautiful, and, and those people who receive healing don't do that." But you know, um, this thing of really accepting. I mean that that's the orthodox ethos you know and it's mm -hmm. um to me that's what that is it's like the beauty and the power of god is revealed in his infirmity mm -hmm. so in mm -hmm. that sense it's it's to, in some regards even more powerful you know well you thought it was going to be a healing video where he was healed but the in the end we were the ones who were healed hey um, turns out we were the one that were healed all along <laughs> all along <laughs> Turns out the healing was the friends we made along the way. Along the way. <laughs> um, Is that cheers? No. No, it's just the thing. I don't know what. Generic, stupid. Turns out COVID was the friends we made all along. Like, <laughs> like at the end of the movie, the magic's been inside you all along type of thing. <laughs> um, but Father linked, we have a, um, there's like a, a, Father and I will send each other music videos. And father linked this thing to uh, the band Tool. They have this song called The Pot. And I've always hated this song. Like, I hate this song. Um, and But this reaction video made me, like, go back and listen to this song again. Because, like, the way that the dudes that were, like, listening to the song were, like, <laughs> reacting to it, it was priceless. It was absolutely... It's, it's like the first thing on YouTube tool the pot reaction it's incredible and there's this part where this guy is listening to the singer it's like four minutes in and maynard the singer for tool screams and the guy's like he's like like looks <laughs> right at the camera like it's 
perfect because he's like talking and then Maynard starts screaming and he screams for like three seconds and guys like <laughs> like looks like right at the camera i've always hated this song and this is the thing about tool and, and we'll we'll get to the orthodoxy stuff in just one second we'll get to god in just one second but like the tool is like they're incredible like they're absolutely incredible music musically all that stuff i, I can totally get down on them like 100 percent. but that singer drives me up a wall and my wife has this thing where she says musicians are specifically singers who look like they're like looking in a mirror when they're singing or like the equivalent of like TikTok stars that like look directly into the camera so they can see exactly what they look like when they're singing. And she's like, that's the singer for Tool. And I 100% agree. But this reaction video was just like, it's, I love reaction videos. I totally I get too. down on them. This was one I of the too. best ones I've seen. Like I was totally into this. Okay. But this was a way, way, way better reaction. I'll say that. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Uh, I'll put the, you know what? I'm going to grab it so that I can actually put the link. Oh, I don't have the link to that video. Do we have it online or somebody just sent it to you, father? Yeah. Someone just sent it to me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it up on IPFS and then put a link so people can, if they want to share it with people. Yeah, videos sure. that people share in threads. How about that making friends with the saint video? Boy, that was. Oh, that like, was great. Um, I'm going to put a link to that too. This. Yeah. Okay, Father, I'm so sorry. How do you say his name? Metropolitan. Neophytus. Neophytus. Okay. I can never say it. Amorphu. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a video where he talked. Yeah, he, yeah, he was the guy that he got called to a court building, and he they were like wear a mask. He's like, no. He's like, then you have to wait outside. He's like, fine. And he turned around and there's a picture of him just sitting outside. He's like, <laughs> just like, no, I'm not doing it. Like not not obstinately. He kind of looks like he's thinking about something else a little bit. He's like, you know, but. Anyway, he has this video where he talks about some some 10 year old girl asks him, uh, like, what do you do about anxiety? And basically, yeah. he's like, you find a saint that you get really close to and you just make the sign of the cross neatly, nicely is what he says. Not like you're playing a mandolin. Uh, <laughs> was, and I that thought that was great. really, really good. You just say, help me. And they know. You know, they know, they know what you need help with. Like they know you're just asking for help. You don't have to be specific or lengthy, but man, that has really helped me this week. Like that is really, really St. John Chrysostom and St. Andrew get a little posse of saints that you can hang out with. So anyway, yeah, I think we've eaten up the intro. That's fine. Let's move on. Um, so I know we didn't discuss it beforehand. So if we got to do this now and talk about it, if we are going to do the second video on ecumenism, because I think more specifically, we could talk about some of the nefarious parts of like communicate um, ecumenism. But if we were to do that, I kind of also wanted to talk about inter Christian ecumenism because last time we did talk about ecumenism. We didn't really decide on if it was like interfaith or mm. within like the realm of quote unquote, like Christianity. I think it would be really good because it's something that just kind of keeps coming up in my life right now about inter-Christian, like quote unquote, uh, ecumenism, this idea that, you know, there's different churches, but they all still fall under to the same tree and we're all still worshiping the same God and the same spirit. And that kind of, that kind of, you know, thought process, I suppose is the word. And then I thought we could touch a little bit on this whole idea of a one world religion kind of stuff as a little, mm -hmm. little spice at the end. So. I, I mean, on, in, in specific, something that's been coming up that's that that is exactly that and what i'm curious about uh and maybe this is a good jumping off point is how like i guess i've been having a bit of trouble like i've been struggling with 
And I think this is partially due to the fact that although I was like raised in the church when I was young or a church with the small C, right? Or a series of churches. Like when I was young, I spent a long time like outside of any Christian devotional context, right? That it was like Christianity was there in terms of, you know, reading scripture and all of these things, but more from in like a cult standpoint, intellectualizing them, whatever. Like I was still familiar with, with scripture and all of these, these things. But now I guess I'm having a bit of a, a, a little bit of a time struggling with, you know, interacting with individuals who maybe want to have, and I, I think it's just because I have a little bit of a platform myself, like, so people, maybe I don't know them that well. Um, this is definitely not with people that I, I know well, because these they, the people I know well aren't wanting to have these conversations, which I'm totally fine with. Um, but like that they come from particularly Protestants, some Catholics, and like there may be an ongoing conversation, but like where is the point where it's like, okay, we can have this conversation and, you know, we're talking about Christianity and being a Christian. And then where is the point where it's like, ah, uh, you know, we're not talking about like, I'm not valid. I'm, I'm not here to validate you, right? Like, I'm not here to validate your evangelical beliefs if we're going to have a conversation about Christianity, right? Yeah. But, at the, but at the same time, I have a, a, like a, a bit of a concern about like, what is like about the royal path in terms of being like, well, you know, I don't, at the same time, I don't want to fall to, to the right too much and be like, ah, well, I can't even have this conversation with you because you're not Orthodox. Right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, where, where is the point where I'm, what's the Royal where path? I'm serving? Yeah. Where I'm serving Christ because I'm bringing them closer to the church because they're like on the path. And where is the point where I have to be like, okay, actually, I can't continue to have this interaction with you because it might be validating your belief that like you are potentially in like the church when you're not. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I can actually start this off, even though father, father, do you want me to text someone in the neighborhood and have them bring you some coffee? <laughs> I mean, there's, I know I got the number of a guy who lives right by you. I say, Hey, could you bring over father a cup of coffee real quick? It's okay. It's all good. No shame. I get it. You just kind of look like you're barely holding on. <laughs> I'm in another world. It's okay. It's okay. I know one conversation is, is that if they start um, talking bad on icons, that's a conversation in which you immediately kind of like try and change the subject because they're actually like blaspheming. So if you have like a, like specifically, I'm thinking of a seventh day Adventist. I know who I've like really had to steer clear of the subject of icons because they'll start saying like, oh, you know, all this different kind of stuff. And then like, I just kind of try and change the subject as quick as I can, because they might have to give word for that one day. So, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want to aid that. You know, I would say, um, and it takes, it takes discernment, you know, and um, I think the key is understanding that there's no, it's like everything in our spiritual life. We want to have a rule book. And um, it's really tough because one way you answer someone, you can't answer someone yet, you know, someone else the exact same way. And accordingly, even someone you can't necessarily answer them twice the same way. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but I would say a general rule of thumb is, is this person actually thirsty? Are they actually hungering for righteousness? Are they actually seeking for truth? Or are they wanting to um, flex? If they're willing to flex, depending on how bad you feel, you know, just ignore them. You know, if you want to try to destroy them, go ahead. But that's the big thing is what, what is really their intent here? And then from there, you can start discerning your own heart. Do I want to destroy this person? You know, like... Have I had a bad week and this person's the perfect punching bag for me? You know, these are <laughs> these are the things that, that happen in, the, in these type of moments. Now, it gets more difficult when you have a relationship with someone, right? So when you have someone who's of a different confession, let's say, and there's this kind of ongoing thing. And, you know, 
typically speaking, some people will have a more um, offensive, you know, like offensive, not, you know what I mean? Like attack mode. And, and that's just them trying to navigate. Because let me give you one, one little thing. You always have to remember people naturally are intimidated by orthodox. I had um, I had a, a gentleman, I had someone write me um, from Poland, actually, uh, week before last, and uh, wanting some greetings to you, my brother, by the way, um, and wanting some direction on some things, you know. And he's Polish, so you know, Poland has this long-standing history with the Catholic Church, right? Just like someone would say, Russians having a long-standing history with, with Orthodoxy, right? But at any rate, part of what he's talking to me about is trying to navigate, you know, being in Poland and his mother and his mother kind of being a new age and various sects and then kind of coming back to Catholicism. And then this is what I'm trying to get at. At one point in time, he's relaying to me how his mother was like, oh, the Orthodox, because he's, you know, she's attending an Orthodox parish in Poland and it's a struggle, right? For all these reasons and people are like, what are you doing? You know, we have this millennia long history with, with Roman Catholicism, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, his, his mother says to him like, oh, the Orthodox, they think they're so arrogant. They think they have, you know, they're the ones with the truth. The reason I bring that up is because it's his mom, right? And so there's a measure of respecting his mother that he has to do. Um, and also not just respecting her in the sense of like rotely or out of obligation because of the commandments um, and because it's just morally naturally correct thing to do, but also too, because in that respecting of her, it could be very well the thing that begins to soften her heart versus him, him being aggressive. And this is the mistake that people make so often that I've seen is the aggression actually hardens people's hearts, not the other way around, right? So it, it, all that to say, it takes some discernment. And I think even disengaging, or excuse me, not engaging with someone, that can even be aggressive. There, there's a way that you can not engage with someone in an aggressive way where you just are being dismissive. So you have to be careful, you have to be discerning. And, and really, this is the hardest thing in the world. You have to have love. And I, I hate to I hate to be that guy and you know whatever, but there's no other way to really have a fruitful engagement. You know, um, everyone forgive me. I'll just say this, but I am speaking from experience on this because uh, I've had the blessing to be used by the Lord to bring a number of souls to the church and. I've also had my failures and the failures have always been me not having the right attitude or disposition, you know, a disposition. And the successes have always been the, the, the blessing of the Lord because of love, love of God and love of that person in front of me. Um, so I don't know if that's too kumbaya. I don't know if that's too vague, but I, I think that's, that's the key. Um, because the other part of it is too, is like, especially if we're talking about um, certain things, you know, like, you know, shout out to Frank, right? Good, good Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, you know, it's like, we can just, you know, we can pull Steve Rogers and just be like, oh, I can do this all day, whatever. And you can go tit for tat about facts, whatever. But the problem with that is, is that, you know, it never really touches on what's, what the real issues are. And I think that's something to, to kind of keep in mind is like, what are you discussing? You know, like, are we discussing moral systems? Are discussing like liturgical pedigree? Or are we discussing who, is, who has maintained the revelation of Christ? <laughs> you know? Sure. Like, does that make sense? And and I know that's like, oh, duh, yeah, but it's, it it's it's not it's not a given. I, I've been in so many conversations where it's just like this this is I mean, we might as well be talking about some we can might as well just close our eyes and and throw a dart at the kind of like list of arcane 
religions and rituals and just yeah. and we might as well be talking about that you know what i'm saying might as well be debating about tolkien lore or something yeah, we like might that. as well be debating about tolkien lore and i'm just telling you like I, i've seen it with people who chant i've seen it with people who are into liturgics i've seen people with icons I, i've seen all of it I, i've seen people forgive me but it, it's very easy to lose that you know that living connection in regards of Christ and and, and, and all the things that we that we try to strive for, you know. So it all this is like important. So our conversation moving forward, I think I would rather really kind of keep our, our focus on that and really trying to understand, which is tough because it would have been actually great to have someone like Frank um, or even someone like you know like Silwan or Mother Elizabeth on. And really kind of talk with them about their experiences of, of being, you know, in Rome. You know what I mean? And, and really kind of like. Maybe it can still I, happen. I, huh? Maybe it can still happen. Yeah, you know, I mean, because again, again, just to point it out, you know, it's like Frank had a point in regards of like, I, I mean, um, I stand by my, in, my initial intuitive take on like let's say the um eucharistic adoration you know what i mean but i also have to defer the fact that like i don't really know what i'm talking about because i'm not within the latin tradition i've never done it and you know i'm not gonna act like i sat down and read some sort of like tome on it you know pro or against so you know i'm just in that area i was only speaking from my my ignorance to be frank uh no pun intended on that so um <laughs> So, so I just think, I, I mean, I'm just really aware of these things and, and I want to put them forward because, um, you know, Father Peter Hears has done uh, recently a really great, uh, he did a real great that. lecture, kind of pulling apart all this stuff. It's really great. And I think for getting into the like, getting into the, the doctrinal, theological, well, getting into the doctrinal dogmatic issues i mean i would just everyone can go there you know what i mean mm -hmm. because it's like unless you're unless we have which we might do like andrew said you know unless we have someone and, I, and this is to be charitable from that tradition to really kind of share with us you know like i said i, I would i would love to, to see something like that that's the best way to do it what we can speak about here are the more theological in the sense of prayer in their sense mm -hmm. of the experience of God, speaking of God, not theological in the sense of academic, right? But theological. I mean, I feel very comfortable in kind of talking about that, you know, and bringing in Father Sarah from Rose, bringing in, you know, the Orthodox religion of the future, speaking about Pentecostalism, Protestantism, Evangelicalism, you know, there's there's lots of things um, I think we... Yeah, let's give, let's give Catholics a break. Let, let's say, like, let's give them a break. I feel like we've been picking on them a little bit and maybe we can i mean because yeah i mean father first off father yes absolutely and i find that there's a guy i know right now a brother who we disagree on a couple different things about the church um there's a couple things that i see as eh, it's a little bit watering down the faith a little bit there's some there's some stuff that's borderline ecumenism and I try not to be the guy that stands in the corner, just pointing the finger, you know, just like you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. I don't like being that guy, but there are times where it's probably me speaking out of, not out of love, you know, but there are times where I do correct, you know, in the sense of like, no, you're not, that's not correct. That's not right. Like, and I, if he listens, so he probably knows who he is. So first off, I'm sorry. And second off, like, it does quickly come down to like intellectual sparring It's like who can prove the other one wrong. And it's like, that's when I end up in a state state like that, I know I've crossed a line. I know that like, I'm no longer in the cool and like the good zone. I've, I've fallen off the side of a Royal of the Royal path. I'm, I'm in some kind of intellectual debate land and I, and I don't want to be there. Yeah. And that's, wow. that's a big reason why a lot of us came to the church in the first place because we were tired of that. We were tired of everything being kind of like, you know, rising and falling on someone's opinion, 
you know, rising and falling. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's one of the big things that we, we try to get away from, you know? So yeah, that's, that's right. I mean, my, for, for me, it's, and this is what, this is what I'm trying to navigate. And I mean, I've had several, several instances. I actually, mine, mine is more falling to the other side because like I so, and one of the things that brought me to orthodoxy was that it was the first time I encountered Christianity where I could have a, an actual personal experience of the same degree of spiritual power, like in isolation, like in my own prayer life, mm-hmm. that was superior, that, that was even equal to, or then superior to the experiences I'd had in the occult, mm-hmm. right? And other things like plant medicine and all of that, right? To where that, that was to me what made it tangibly real, that it's like, oh, I don't have to go to a church and be love bombed. I don't have to read anything. I can go straight to prayer, straight to the source. Obviously it's magnified by all of those other things, right? Like, and I'm not saying that, but this was the first time that I had that. And so for me, having been like involved in occult things, my spirituality, having been so private, I've, I've become so accustomed and comfortable with, you know, somebody starts to want to talk about spirituality and I'll just be like, and I'll hear them going on whatever. And I'll be like, oh, uh, okay, yeah, cool, all right. And it's like not in like a rude way, not in anything, but just like this is when you said that that could be aggressive. I really got like, ooh, yeah, actually, mm-hmm. so many times I've been like, hi, you fool. Like, I don't say that. I don't say right. that out loud, right? right. I'm like, are you, are you fool? You're, you're never gonna get it, and like walk yeah. away. And my challenge is really to be like, okay yes, you fool, but I have an obligation. (laughs) I have an obligation now to like spread the gospel and, oh, here, I'm going to have to like do this thing for you, you know? And it's like, but not for you. Like I've got to do this thing for Christ, I guess. And that's what I'm most struggling with is not just walking away from those engagements, but like actually engaging because I'm very satisfied with my own personal prayer life. But I know that even selfishly, like it will be greatly like that, that I'm supposed to be doing. I have to be doing that. Right. Like, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm struggling with and trying to get like, trying if it's, it's, I don't know. I just, any, any sort of thoughts on that would definitely be helpful. Like of not falling onto the left. It's funny because um, I've never had this situation before happen where I'm like, I really feel I know what I want to say to what you're saying, but then I'm like, oh, so many of my spiritual children listen to this, and I would hate for them to go into a panic being like, is it me? Is it me? But Hey, Father, uh, really quick before you start, I just want to say I've fallen into an error on the right, and Cyprian may have fallen into an error on the left, and that's where we are on the screen. Cyprian's over here, and I'm over here. I'm symbolism just, happens yeah symbolism, symbolism. Happens. i get it i get symbolism All right i'm sorry father continue no problem no problem so um let me try to answer it this way and it'll probably make sense to no one and that's my fault um i constantly have to navigate I constantly have to navigate with people the reality that um, they want to come and tell me something, if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is, um, not sharing, like, this is my personal experience, this and this and that, but like, oh, I know how it is, da 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 da, right? Now, there is always a temptation to just want to like, it's like having a kid, you know, when children sometimes they get to a certain age, especially boys, and they start feeling themselves a little bit, you know, and they want to tell you, it's like, I have underwear older than you, mm-hmm. literally, you know, and you want to tell me something that that's what I'm talking about, right? But what I found is uh, to help stay on that path, 
haven't I done that as well? Right? Mm -hmm. Haven't I also, you know, oh, let me tell you something, whatever, right? And, and even like with God, right? Oh, let me, you know, well, this is how it is, God, da, 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 da right? So there's something really amazing that begins to happen when even though it may not be, you know, this is the, this is the same thief and the recluse I brought it up before. If you don't have love, you know, do, do acts of love, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have humility, do acts of humility, right? If you don't have mystical experience of God, you know, then like do those things that, that will open you up to it. And what, and what those things are, they are never, um, extreme feats of humil of, of, of asceticism that doesn't open you up to the mystical experience of God. Being able to be present with someone in humility, that's what opens you up to. And I know people are rolling their eyes. I'm just, I'm just telling you. I'm just no, telling it's you. true. It's true. That, that's right. And so what you'll find is God will, God will find you, God will bring you into a season where you are just it's rough. It's rough. And it's objectively rough. It isn't just kind of like, you know, there's those moments where you're in the pressure cooker and everyone's doing great, but it's just, it's you. You know what I mean? You're struggling. It's your thing. I'm talking about those moments where it's objectively like someone can look and be like, oh yeah, I can see all these different things are happening. Those moments are incredible because what happens is the more you make that choice to say, you know, maybe blessed, like, okay, God, glory to God for all things. The more you do that, even though you're not feeling it, the more that God will bring you these people. And what will happen is you actually begin to have a love for that person that is actually like beyond just like a natural affection. Yes. Is any of this making sense what I'm saying? Yeah, no, 100 percent It is a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like as some people might be bored out there. I just want to encourage you. What I'm sharing right here, this is the stuff that people spend years trying to figure out. Mm. Like, forgive me, I'm just saying this is here, here's with a bow on top. Enjoy, you know? And the thing is, is that it's so plain, it's hidden right in front of our eyes. It's like the George Washington Carver with the peanut. It's yeah. like reveal to me the mysteries of the universe. Yeah. God's like, you're not ready for that. Yeah. Reveal the mysteries of life. You're not ready for that. Okay. What am I ready for? The peanut. Yeah. And look at all these things that you did with the peanut. Yeah. yeah. Because what I'm what I really want to try to 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 get in it, I'm you know, it's not planned. It's just this is where the spirit's moving, I think, is is love. I really want to talk about love today. Because I, I think love is the answer to ecumenism. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I know that sounds crazy. I, I know it sounds really crazy. Well, debating is not. Debating. But, is not. Yeah, debating, debating doesn't solve anything. It doesn't get anything done. Um, because fu fundamentally, the debate is really like um, there's people, there's, there's personalities out there that are really good at debating. And they're super good. But you know what you do? You know what you'll find? You'll find that the vast majority of people will watch certain personalities just to kind of like get confirmation bias or bias confirmation. You know, you know what I'm saying? And yes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking that. I'm not knocking that at all. But the problem with that is, is it doesn't stretch you. And so therefore, since it doesn't stretch you, you're not really experiencing God. Let me say this a different way. One of the big reasons why for me in, the, in this project, obviously, is like the hope to like, obviously give this perspective of the real path, right? To deal with the, the kind of binary stuff with politics, all that stuff, right? But just for me, per, like for me personally as a priest and in my, my priesthood, I have this incredible desire to get people out of lukewarm deluded self-willed waters it, it does if that makes sense okay and the the way that's connected with ecumenism and the, the way it's connected with all the stuff is that um people 
again, they, they approach these things, number one, from perspective like they know. But they base that not off of the right criteria, right? So in other words, you basing the criteria of like, I know because you studied something, because you know facts, it really doesn't matter. No one is going to be on their deathbed and be like, aha, give a date, this and this and that, that no one's going to do that, right? For me, I'm like, I know what people think about when they're on their deathbed. I know the things that they're facing because I've been with people as they're dying. No one is like, you know, this one debate, you know, this one thing, right? It's always been, what, what did I do with my life? And this is really important because why ecumenism is a problem is because it, in many ways, obfuscates what people should really be looking for. Let me say that in a different way. People get so caught up in, in, in trying to argue for how correct they are on something, they, they lose what they really should be asking. Do I know God? Am I, am I being transformed? Do I have the kind, if I have, am I tasting the, am I tasting the kingdom of heaven now? That is really what the question should be asked in regards of the context of ecumenism. So if, if we're kind of putting this forward, love, right? Seeking God, the kingdom of heaven, you know, um, am I being stretched? Am I being transformed? Am I being challenged? Once we have all these things kind of in the hopper, if you will, then I think we can really move forward and be like, okay, well, let's talk about some of these things because um, movements, spiritual movements uh, that reinforce a diluted spirituality are dangerous because they, they are an obstacle to this very thing that I, that I or we are trying to, to, to speak on right now. It's like you're no longer checking yourself, which is maybe, yeah, because if you're orthodox, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but if you're practicing a good spiritual, like I might be wrong about that. Who knows? I could be wrong. But if you start believing your own deluded behavior, your deluded like spiritual experiences, then you're, well, I'm obviously doing something right because I'm having these experiences or I'm having this thing happen. So let's go down this road. Am I am I way off base on that, Father? No, 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 you're not. I mean, I hate I hate to be this way to say it like this, but like um, my my spiritual father right now, my my current confessor, right? Um, he's a good priest. He's a good spiritual father. You, you know why? Because he actually like he challenges me he's not you know what i mean he he actually has love for me in the sense of he doesn't put up with any of my any of my own bs you know what i mean like i'm just talking very real right now because this because because this stuff matters and um i know for me i'll i, I will take a confessor and a spiritual father that I know loves me because, you know, he, he, he refuses to, he refuses to not allow me to see myself, if that makes sense. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not co-signing it, it makes, yes. Yeah, it makes a lot, that makes a lot of sense to me. My, one of my greatest, that is my greatest failings that I've had in the past. And, and I've known it to be lack of love. A situation where I see that somebody is doing something where I'm like, if I don't correct this person right now, like they're in front of me, they're doing something. If I don't correct this person right now, and it's been, it's usually been, it's, it's, it's been as I've been, you know, 30 and above, and it's generally been younger men, right? Yeah, to where it's sure. like, I see what they're doing. Uh oh, I see what he's doing. And it's like, do I have time for this kid right now? Like, and eh, let it go, you know, like, let it go. He'll shine him on. He's going to figure it out. He's going to have to take this, take his lumps. You know, he's going to have to take his lumps. 
And oftentimes I've just been like, yeah, I don't have the time for this. I don't have the time to correct him. I don't have the time to walk him through that. And I realized like looking at this, even in the moment, how little love and sometimes how much like almost contempt I have. And maybe it's because I'm seeing myself in that. And I'm like, ah, oh, what a fool I was when I was this guy. Like eh, are- I had to, I had to suffer. You got to suffer now, buddy. Like I'm just going to let you. And, and that's the thing right there is that this is, this is now slowly we're kind of weaving in this other side of it because the reason why ecumenism is important to talk about is because where there is actual error that matters, right? Not to say that none of it matters, right? But the kind that you are able to speak on, whoever you are out there listening to, right? Like someone's watching, they're like, yeah, you know, whatever your context is, like the reason why it matters is because these things do lead people down a bad path. And, it, and, it, and these things do lead them down a path in which they are not able to apprehend God and his fullness and his truth, right? Now, the trick is always this, right? Do you, for me, I don't know, and I'm, please, Cyprian, correct me, but what I pulled out from what you just said is, and here's the difference, right? The difference from the other perspective where you're at is, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take the time to, to say something to that kid. That's the difference. See, there's a difference between, you know, I don't know if this person's going to hear me. You know, I don't know. If, you know what I mean? Versus I don't want to deal with you because of that disdain or that contempt or just to be frank, being slovenly, you know, not wanting to like put the time. That's not love either. It isn't. Exactly. And, and that's exactly. the other side that a lot of Orthodox folk have. And they say they give bad, false statements like, well, that's not our way and this and that they, they just they're just being lazy they're just they're just lacking love it's almost like ortho calvinists where it's just like well you know god will, god's gonna sort it out and it's like yeah but we have to we if we see if we see something wrong and and we are able in love to share with our brother their error and, and to save them from potentially like destruction, uh, destruction, we that it's said not to. And here's the here, here's how you know it. it's love. And and what happens to people is that they don't realize that part of part of the ecumenical problem or the the problem of engaging in ecumenical debate is that for the orthodox because we're right forgive me <laughs> just, 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 I mean, we are. Right. but yeah. because we're right the the danger is far more for us actually right because the danger is always to become you know blinded in a pharisaical way I'll, I'll just say it i'll say it the danger is always for us to um you know miss the forest for the trees you know like these are always the dangers for us and so i just to me it's important that, that we bring this up because let, let's just talk about something specific, right? Like um, Pentecostalism, right? Like going straight for it, huh? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I'll do. I'll throw something out, right? Throw something out to you guys. Like, there's a band I listen a lot to. It's great, you know. Um, and at, at, Pentecostal, you know, the dude's Pentecostal, whatever. That's a hardcore band, whatever. But um, I listen to it, you know, I get some benefit out of it. I enjoy it, you know. Um, but also, to be frank, you know, to be really honest with you, um, and I, I'm at a point in my life where, you know, I can listen to something like that and not be, I, I can discern and not be affected. I can spit out the bones, easy, right? It, it's like, I, I, I do not give even, you know, my three-year-old, I don't give him like just chicken on his own quite yet. I'll choke on some bones. You know what I mean? And my one-year-old or my 16 month old, whatever, how old he is, you know, I pull the chicken off for him. I know that's that analogy people hate, but it's true. It's like having that humility to be like, you know, there's certain things that I can, I can engage with, that, you know, 
like this. Um, that's one thing, but it's a problem because Pentecostalism is essentially emotionalism. And there's movements, which I don't know how strong they are right now, but they're, you know, like three, four years ago, five years ago, there's strong movements that were really trying to like make bridges with Pentecostalism and uh, orthodoxy, you know? And I just, I think it's really dangerous because there's the orthodoxy is charismatic in the truest sense, but it isn't diluted and it isn't, and, and orthodoxy fundamentally, especially the Slavic tradition has a strong emphasis on watching out for prelates and for delusion, right? So this is just a little snapshot of like why, ecum, why an ecumenical, why ecumenism in, interconfession is problematic. Yes. Because when we when we start getting like I'll just tell you like we don't like our experience of the Holy Spirit like they're they're not talking about the Holy Spirit as we no understand. no you know what I mean and I know that's shocking for some people to hear but I'm just well I mean how many times have you had a, a oh I'm sorry Cyprian just once I'll just throw this in no uh, please no please please, please. So how many times have you been in a Protestant church or at least I have. And they'll say, well, God told me to tell you, right. You know, or I just have really have a feeling that this new project we're going to work on is really going to do well. I feel like God's just speaking to me and I work at a Protestant organization and I just hear that kind of stuff all the time of, I just really feel like the Holy spirit is doing something, you know, like that they're, he's really going to provide for, and then when that thing doesn't work out, or the thing that that person says, it's like, you know, to my little 16, 15 year old brain that really started looking around at the Protestant I was raised in and just being like, wait, how is this guy saying this? And this guy is saying this, and both of them are wrong. Does that mean that the Holy spirit was wrong? That's exactly it. That's uh -huh. exactly it. Ephesians four, there's one body, one baptism, one spirit. Uh -huh. Yeah. One body, one baptism, one spirit. And that's something that like, we, you know, it, it's funny. We experience that um, so powerfully here in the States. That's all I can speak on. I'm, I'm an American, born and raised an American. So I can't really speak on, you know, Serbian Orthodoxy, Russian Orthodoxy, you know, Syrian Orthodoxy, in the sense of being within those ethnic cultures, like directly, right? Why am I saying this? Because what I can say is, um, man, I have, my wife and I, you know, at one point in time traveled across the country and went to, like, checked out every different kind of church we could, you know? And I've, I've had so many wonderful people who I've known just who are like, you know, like doing the best with what they got. Um, but always looking for that kind of like, that common thread, that common, that binding agent, never able to find it. Because even if I get around some people here, it's like, okay, I have to kind of speak your lingo. If I get every, you know what I mean? I have to kind of move some things around. Now I have run into Lebanese, Syrian, Greek, Serbian, Georgian, Russian, Romanian. I run to all these people from these countries, from these cultures. And it's like that thing my wife and I had always been looking for, we found it. Like, I, that experience, people, this is one thing that, um, you know, Oh, this is this is a uniquely convert experience, I think, which is one of the one of the few blessings we get. You don't know how powerful that is to find that once you've been looking for it. Mm -hmm. When you find that Absolutely. unified thing, it's just like, oh, this is the church. Oh, well, it's objective. It's objective. That's, that's the one thing for me is that it's like, and it sort of gets to to, you know, the reason why I think I. There, there's no reason i know the reason the reason is like my my fallenness and it's what i'm repenting for but it's like 
it's the it's the sort of concept underneath a situation where I'll just be like, eh. The, what's what's been coming up to me is because it's like it's concrete in this way is you know a lot of people want to engage me on it's it, it's the same thing like they basically want me to rationalize their psychedelic use for them uh, as a spiritual tool mm. because of my vast experience in the past with psychedelics right so it's like they want me to reconcile with them and it's it happens like it happens at least once a month, if not once a week, that someone will specifically reach out to me privately, email, social media, whatever, and be like, oh, you know, yes, I'm very interested in orthodoxy, but the psychedelic thing, whether it's ayahuasca, whether it's mushrooms, whatever, they want to have, you know, this, this conversation. And like, it's very, I feel like, you know, this is because, because those have, especially when we're talking about ayahuasca, there's, that's a religion. And it's like, that's a religion of a people. And so I, I know that there is quite a, a movement of people who are like call themselves Christian, but yet they also want to be participating in the psychedelic stuff and be like, it's related. And I probably would have been in that, right? I would have been in that with, before finding orthodoxy. So it's like, it's very easy for me to, to walk away from that because like walk away from those conversations as opposed to sitting down and trying to work through with them. Like you're look, cause these people are looking for an objective experience. These are not people who would be satisfied in an evangelical church. These are not, you know what I mean? But they are so looking for an authentic, objective, personal experience where, you know, that's one of the big things about psychedelics and especially about like plant medicines, the stronger ones like ayahuasca, where everybody has the same experience, right? Because that's the objectiveness, right? And it's, I think it's what you're saying, Father, is that it's like, yeah, you talk to a Serbian, you talk to a Greek, you talk to, you know, a Russian, and it's like, oh, yeah, we're all having the same experience of this thing. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many people who are looking for this, and it's like, that's, but that's very, like, there have been so many times where I've been like, well, you know, you could go and like, I always tell them, I wouldn't, I'm not going to do them anymore. Like I found, I've personally found something that's like, it's the answer to what I was looking for in the first place that made me want to do the psychedelics. But I have found myself saying like, you know, you could, but that's up to you. Mm -hmm. You know, like you could go and do it, but that's up to you. Whereas I would be, I think if they were presenting like it in a religious context, where I would be like, if they were actually saying to me, instead of psychedelics, they were saying to me, I'm going to go and do occult stuff and summon demons. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, well, you could, you could go and summon demons. I would be like, you really need to not do that. But I have found myself not doing that when it comes to psychedelics. Yeah. If it makes sense, like the direction, the direction where I'm going. Yeah. With yeah. This, and, yeah. And, and, and so the, so I think that there's, this is so funny. Um, just a little side note. At some point in time, we're gonna to have to talk about AI and yeah, oh for sure, and demonic and 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 Solomonic mm -hmm. magic and all this stuff. Okay, so um, yeah, so here here's the thing from my perspective, right? Um, part of the thing about the dialogue that's missing on the other side of it is that it's disingenuous. I said this the last ecumenical discussion. It's disingenuous to say that certain confessions aren't Christian. And I and I feel comfortable saying this is this this is what people have been waiting for. You know, you're you think you're gonna trap me, but we'll see what happens. Like I I feel comfortable saying I think there is a spectrum in which people are further or closer to the truth. To say that that's not the case is disingenuous, right? Let, let me give you right, let me give you an example. Like when I, when I, one of the first things that blew me away when it came to the church was like, it was just like, boom, it was just a download, right? And I was like, oh yeah, um, how proud have I been? I was thinking about all the times where, you know, I, I was going to like school this Mormon. I'm going to school this Jehovah's Witness, whatever it was, you know? And it's just like, I just, God began to show me my absolute arrogance 
just like right and so from there it was like a logical conclusion for me which i began to use in my discussions with evangelical brothers and sisters is like well yeah okay you know like like oh you're orthodox and blah 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 that's like being catholic blah 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 i'm like that's wrong well it's like well hold on here like you know um you think mormons are, are christians you know well of course not i'm like well they do they think they are right they think they are so you know from their perspective right they're they're christians and they just have their kind of like twist on it and and from your perspective which i agree with you i agree with you right person i'm speaking with but nevertheless like can you see now from where i'm standing where i'm like well you're wrong like they are maybe not to the same degree right but you're still wrong you're still wrong so this this thing about and this is why it's so problematic is that on the one hand yes okay I think there's a degree. Obviously, like we have way more in common with Roman Catholics than we would with, you know, uh, Pentecostals. And we have more in common with Pentecostals than we would Jehovah's Witnesses. We go down the line, right? And that gets into the creed. That gets into their, that gets into their doctrinal, dogmatic understanding of who the Trinity is. Who is Christ? Who is the Holy Spirit? Okay, great. I think everyone kind of gets that by now. I don't know, sure. but maybe, right? Let me throw that out there. But the other side of that is, I've also seen people who their doctrine is wrong, but I just, I'm, I'm saying this as a priest now and as a fairly traditional conservative priest, um, but I can just sense that there's something there. I can sense that I should talk with this person. You understand what I'm saying? Like their doctrine is off, whatever, but it's like, nah, there, there's something there that like, to whatever degree they they I can go like, yeah, you've had an experience of God. And like, let me let me be one breadcrumb in your journey. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's, it's like, just that they're acting out of ignorance. It's not that they're rejecting necessarily. Exactly. They've just been ignorant of the gospel. That's that's exactly it. And so being able to discern that's really important because all these wonderful scriptures within the gospels where the Lord's like. You know, he's not for me or he's not against me, it's for me. You know, I still have sheep that are not of this fold. Like all those things, I keep those in mind. And I try to always be charitable. And right, the real path of that is to be charitable means to be loving. And to be loving means knowing when to say something and when not to say something. I have a question about that. When if when you're done, Father, if you have a further no, point. No. Yeah. Um I have, I, I've, I'm in a weird intersection of like being in recovery, which is very, very Western minded in the sense of not the spiritual, but the language, they're all about the spiritual experience and, and, you know, the halls of AA, um, <clears throat> they're all about that. And they're not too keen on dissection. They're okay with things being mysteries. They're okay with things being, unknown. it's actually pretty important to an alcoholic to not try to dissect things too much it's you know hyper fixation um it goes into withdrawal it goes into uh, uh you know this uh a lot of times our rationality is out of control we're ultra rational because we can we have to be to justify the behavior that we were engaging in at the time right so well i only drink 16 beers a day because my dad beat me and, you know, that rationalization works for a long time. So that easily translates into your recovery of, oh, well, my wife, I know we divorced, not because I cheated on her, but because she was a jerk, you know? And so you have to go back and like, no, that's not what was going on. You were being a jerk and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, so I stand at this intersection of also being an orthodoxy as well. Um, and I have to ask, like, how do you feel, Father? And it's, I'm sure it's probably a case by case, but if you can give like an example or not an example, but maybe like a broad guiding post of giving Orthodox literature or like, like books, like sayings of the desert, desert fathers, or like, uh, you know, maybe kind of headier Orthodox stuff to people who are in recovery, you know, like, they have no intentions of really becoming orthodox 
um, you know, and you're trying to maybe apply some of the principles of orthodoxy to a person recovery, even though they're not really interested in orthodoxy. So they're like, you know, practice, oh. you know, practice like, um, I don't know, some orthodox hesychasm practice like hesychasm, like the silence Wednesday of, and Friday fast Wednesday, something like that, something in the vein of that, you know, something like, but here's this little Joe Schmo who maybe had some time in a non-denom or Methodist or whatever church growing up. And you're giving them this heady orthodox or in some case, maybe not heady orthodox literature and saying like, this should be part of your spiritual program. Oh, such a good question. Like, can we, can we give the a la carte? Like, can we give <laughs> it a good all, way of putting can it? Can we give a, a, can we give a la carte spiritual? Oh, I'm so interested in the answer to this question. Or, or is it like, or is that leading someone in, in the wrong direction? direction if if they're not if we're not trying to bring them into the fullness if that's not our that's a attention. that's, a God, much better that's way such a good it. question such a good question no oh, thank you yes <laughs> yes um okay it depends and it it depends just in the same way where remember i was talking about the spectrum right there's a spectrum of you know, being closer to the truth, right? But still being an error, right? And so on the one hand, it's like, yeah, you're closer to the truth be because you affirm the Trinity, but this other thing just kind of throws you out of the track. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. right. So in the same thing, there's a spectrum where it's like, there are certain things that are teachings of the church, practices of the church, uh and they can be found in a more kind of common sense context and you can apply it that way right so but there's certain things i i've i have found to be um problematic right so let me give you an example when i am when especially when i was doing you know case management more formally, all that stuff. Giving people a practice of, you know, hesychasm, quote unquote, right? Which is a practice of um, intentional stillness, intentional silence, intentional, you know, in, in that world, they call it mindfulness, but it's not mindfulness, right? But you can, in this sense, right, we can use that term because it's not in the context of the church, it's not in the context of, of our practices orthodox, right? Mm -hmm. But I can give that and I can speak from my experience of practicing that and how that's helped me with my sobriety, all those things, you see what I'm saying? Yes. But I don't attach the Jesus prayer to it. And not because of some, um, you know, uh, some issue in regards of like, oh, well, I can't give, I can't move out of like anything that would, you know, cross a boundary with people's personal religion, nothing like that. Like, it just might be opening them up to something. Yes, because practicing the Jesus prayer without proper context can be problematic. Practicing the Jesus prayer without guidance is problematic has a very large potential for being problematic, right? So I just, I, I wouldn't do that. I've never, I don't do that, right? Now, uh, giving people, you know, one of the first things I do, like if someone came and said, hey, father, my cousin's, uh, my cousin's on meth and, uh, you know, but I think he wants to change, can you help him? Sure, okay. One of the first things I'm going to have him do is start getting um, some sense of rhythm and order in his life. Mm -hmm. First thing I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. First thing, right? And this comes from the principle of like the liturgical life. Like we are beings of order. The whole, the, the, the world is liturgical. The sun rises, it sets, right? You know what I mean? And when you give someone a sense of order, then you're able to begin to build out their capacity for, for basically healing, Right. But without that sense of order, it's very difficult because any type of 
technique, any type of gains you make with them is, are very quickly lost because they're not able to, they're not able to hold or maintain that, that progress. Is any of this making sense? Of what yes, I'm saying? absolutely. absolutely. It, it, so it's not explicitly orthodox praxis, but it is at the same time. Right? Yes. And, and that's because it's, it would be inappropriate to introduce something more explicit to them because they don't have the means to maintain and, and to properly engage that. Yes. Because let, let's always remember this too. Uh, the practices of the church, like the life of the church is, it's, you know, it, it can be dangerous. People fall into delusion. People get, you know, all kinds of stuff happens, you know? Um, Cause we're not dealing with some just rote, empty, dry, dead um, kind of exercises. We're, we're dealing with God and we're dealing with the spiritual realm. We're dealing with, with intelligences that are not beholden to us, right? Um, malevolent and, you know, uh, benevolent, you know what I mean? Like both, right? So because of that, we have to be very careful and this has everything to do with ecumenism yes. because people will I this is one of the things that I just go ah you know like I'll never forget I have talked about this before I'm sorry but you know there's someone um who you know was a uh, uh, former brother or whatever you know in her life and he's really into like there was like a some it was like some Protestant Bible cast guys whatever and they were these kind of like you know moody Bible guys and just real kind of edgy trying to like do the a la carte thing and I remember we're going somewhere and he's like oh listen to this and, and I just remember driving the car and, I, and I, I was trying so I didn't want to be that guy I did not want to be that guy but I was that guy you know and they're talking about you know hesychasm and the Jesus prayer and all this stuff these these evangelicals you know and they're going on this podcast talking about trying to guide people on how to like get into hesychastic prayer. You know what I mean? And I was just like, I can't believe you. You're like listening to this. I can't believe you're supporting this because this is flat out dangerous. Like those cats, I guarantee you, I'll put mine down. They mess some people up. I guarantee you. Yes. There's somebody out there who's listening to this. Oh, this sounds so cool. And blah, blah, blah. It's like, I guarantee you, they planted some bad seeds with some people. Absolutely. It's like, it's like what Hot Topic does with the occult. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, they're, yeah. they're, it's Perfectly. the spiritual realm, man. The spiritual realm yeah. is like not to be. It's not to be played with, man. Very well stated, Cyprian. I would absolutely say that is very well stated. I, 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 I've, I've run into this a couple of times before where I'm working for a Protestant organization. Can I, I'm sorry, Andrew. I know I'm talking a lot. No, no, no. Say one thing, please don't lose that. Please forgive me. I just want to say this one thing so I can shut up because I want to make it just a solid point. That's the part about ecumenism that a lot of people don't think about. Because we, we know about like, we want to have good hearts. We want to like, if someone's an error, we want to correct them. We, we've touched on that. You know what I mean? We've touched on these things. But the one thing that people often forget is that it, it goes both ways. And so the things that we are quote unquote sharing, it's like, you, like you, if, if you're at this place where you're just trying to like throw out the prayer for everybody, I'm like, I don't think you understand the prayer then. No. Does that make sense? You know, yeah. I don't, like it's the same no, thing with like, with like icons and stuff. It's just like, you know, like I, this is the thing I run into a lot. People like, oh, I'm gonna learn iconography, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, you Orthodox? No, but I'm like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, don't I mean, want, I don't, I don't want to do that because I don't think you understand what the icon is then. You know what I mean? Well, you do I'm understand it, but you're not acting in love. Yeah. Like, because I think I've done that with my own spirituality where it's been like, oh, you want to talk about this? Sure. I'll talk about these things with you. Like knowing 90% of the people who would pick this up off being like, oh, that guy sounds cool. And maybe I should try this, that it's going to lead them into a, that they're not ready. Right. And it's just like a lack of love. This is my, th this is not the me now, right? Like this is what I'm repenting for, but it's like, this is, th this is a big part of my repentance is that it's like, 
to not share out of love. Like, I'm not sharing this with you. I'm not going to dig into this with you right now out of love. Yeah. Because I'm not, because I don't have the ability or time mm -hmm. to walk you through, to, to give, I can't give you the catechism. Right. Yeah. Right. And without the catechism, you like, I can practice it <laughs> myself, but I can't give you the catechism. And without me giving you the catechism, I can't give you my practice. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I'm, I hate to be this guy, but I always am. And I'm, I'm not too ashamed of it, but do you remember like in the first, sorry, in the first Avengers movie, um, Thor's main issue with them having the Tesseract was is that you guys are inviting a level of war you may not be ready for mm -hmm. like That's Thor right. says that to them he's like um it, it signifies to other realms that you're ready for a type right. of war that you guys might not be that's ready. that's right for. that's perfect man yeah that's perfect. and that's kind of the point i was trying to make is because like uh that that um i work in a protestant organization can i just i'm sorry i need to interrupt you right now and just okay. say something like as you're at, you're talking about Thor, and I kid you not, a giant bolt of lightning, <laughs> no, no thunder, no nothing, just struck like it's not that far. It's a quarter of a mile directly in front of me. One single bolt of lightning came down from the sky. It's not even cloudy or raining, came down from the sky and just hit the ground. Wow. I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. What a mercy. I'm not even kidding you right now. And I just had to mention it because it's <laughs> wow. I, uh, yeah. no, everyone knows we're not in a simulation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unbelievable. I have I was like, what? Sorry, continue. No, 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 no. I'm so glad you interrupted because it's a problem, I... Elijah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's uh, what I figured, yeah. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, Okay, yeah, you're, you're not ready for the level of warfare that. Mm -hmm. So then I have to, and I'm glad that you said that, Father, about the whole finding because uh, so often when I work with people, I like have to change my language a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know, I you know because it's Protestant, and I even say things like along the lines of like, look, I mean, you know, if the music is like the worshipy, wishy washy like stuff, I cannot stand like the modern Christian worship is, is helping you to feel closer to God. Sure. You know, I mean, I, I can't tell you differently. I'm not going to recommend Byzantine chant to you because there's no context for that for you. As much as I would love to give you that context, I'm not going to, because you're working on being sober. I'm not going to throw this whole other thing on you right now. You know, like now that being said, I mean, I have worked with a couple of people over the course of nine months one guy in particular who at the beginning of it, I don't really want to get into this too much, but this guy at the beginning was like, he's one of the old Queens I'm, I hang out with. And he's talking about like, you know, we, I remember having this very specific conversation with him where he was like, Oh, that devil stuff. That's just a metaphor. That's just a metaphor. I was like, Oh, absolutely not. I was like, buddy, you well, spent it's plenty of Orthodox to think that too. Oh, well, and that's, yeah, that's a whole, that's, that's a whole, a whole other thing, thing. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's the, I mean, I tell anybody, I challenge anybody, if this is something that you're even playing around with, like you talk about the, like bringing hell on earth, like look at pictures of world war one and say that hell is not, was not brought to earth. And like that demons do not whisper in people's ears or that people do not outright commune with demons. Like people, people in power do not like Just look at pride month. Just look at pride month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And by the way, if I can just say this, there's this whole thing where I've seen in the limited exposure I have to internet culture, the, Oh, so very limited, the pride month people, somebody must've whispered in the right ear because now they're rocking the whole demon thing. Like I've seen it where they're like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. So demon and pride month. I don't care. Like they are now making shirts that say pride month with the demon like outline. Really? Like, what? Oh yeah, no, one hundred percent. No way, really. They're, embra oh, they're yeah. embracing it, which is exactly which says, well, yeah, of course, a demon would be like, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm a demon, I'm here. So thanks for acknowledging me. I don't, I don't love him, but there's a video of Ben Shapiro where this guy, this thing, it says my pronouns are then like screeches like really loud, and Ben Shapiro's like, well, thank you for being honest that you're a demon. 
Like, thank you for being honest. And it's like, I got to give it to that guy. Sometimes he nails it. And there's another one that, while we're talking, there's another one where he's reacting to a video where someone's talking about how God is, uh, sorry, but God is non-binary. And because, and then Ben Shapiro's like, well, thank you for respecting God's pronouns because he clearly refers to himself as his, like him, like his him in the Bible. So thank you for respecting. I was like, Ben Shapiro, when you get it, you get it. Some, I like your little one liner sometimes. Like, I don't much care for you, but I love your little one liner sometimes. But anyway, the whole point is, is that like, I can only do so much in like, but this guy over the course of these, me talking with him, as now, I mean, I love this guy. I truly do. He's now essentially like, I didn't tell him to, but he's now flipped on everything. This dude would not sit at a table with, with me without a mask and hand sanitizing like every five minutes to the point where he's like, I don't know what I injected in my body. You know, I don't know what they gave me. He's like, I'm voting for Trump. I, if he's on the ballot in 2024, I'm voting for Trump. And then he was like, he would not stand for this uh, Ukraine stuff going down the way it is. And it's just like, Joe, I love where your head's at. I love, I mean, I know I'm not a Trump vote. So here's the thing though. Isn't that proving the point? What specific point? <laughs> In the sense that there's a, there's obviously a love that you have for him. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and that love has caused him to kind of like soften his heart and open his mind in certain ways. Absolutely. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So, so that, that kind of like that, that proves the point because I'm all, I'm all for ecumenical dialogue in the sense that those who are, uh, I just feel like I'm repeating myself. Those who are seeking want them to be able to find like, how mm. will they know unless someone's sent to them? That's what the scripture says. You know what I mean? That's what the scripture says, man. There ain't no Calvinism up in here. Like there isn't, you know, like that. That's people... a quote, by the way. That's going on a shirt. There ain't no Calvinism <laughs> up in here. All right, sorry. That's right. There's the, the the people who wake up with this kind of like realization one day are so few. They're they're such the anomalous exception. They it proves the rule. Yes. Most people will come by them encountering the faith somehow so that's why like we need to be out there we need we need to be out there but we just need to be out there the right way yes and I, and I think that's what i would like people to take away tonight in regards of like i don't there's there's plenty of there's too much right there's too much right hand right you know temptation from the right out there for us as orthodox there's too much you know and that causes people to just um, not necessarily not engage, but engage in the wrong ways and do damage. Yeah. I, I would much rather see more of us being like, let's engage, but let's engage to like try to bring people in. Like, it's not, it's not, internet orthodoxy has a bad reputation in regards to being super vitriolic, whatever, you know, whatever that means. But like, I think, well, I just, I tell you, I, from experience, it, there's some truth to it just because for so many people, it's never been about trying to bring people to the faith. It's been about trying to, I don't know, I guess they think they're defending the faith, but they're not. Well, <laughs> like, because yeah. so many times they're, they're, they're giving the wrong answers anyways, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I, you know, I had a conversation with some brothers this week about this. And those who know me know that, like, up until really recent, I was, like, kind of vehemently opposed to, like, a lot of internet stuff, you know? And I have not had, like, an internet presence up until real recently, up until last, you know, year plus, whatever. And talking about this before, but just in this context with, with these brothers, it was, like, I think it is really important to kind of get out there now. Because... Every parish, well, not every parish. I, the parent, the brothers and the people, I, I, I know people in a lot of parishes kind of across the country and everyone is seeing something happen. Something is happening. People are, people in the States 
in the Western world are, are waking up to, to the church. To me, that's great. I'm all for it. I want, I want that to grow. But in order for it to grow in the right way, because numbers are not the thing, because we can get a whole influx of people who are just, Ugh, you know, they're not here for Christ. They're here for whatever. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about we need to get out there and we need to like make the church attractive for what and who the church is for, for the sake of Christ, for the, love of, for the beauty of the church. You, you understand what I'm saying? And that's, that's the reason why the truth that, that's, that's founded in love is so important because the problem is when you're correct. Yes. Yeah. Right? The problem is when you're correct. And, and so finding that space and it's just, it's love. It's love, but these things, these things are important to really put out, are important to, to put out there in a real way because um, people are hungry and they're gonna look. And I, I'm a firm believer in that. I used to not agree with this way of thinking, but I agree with it now. They're gonna get out there and they're, and they're gonna look. What are they gonna find? Are they gonna this find? Is, yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm all like, let's do this. Because what, because what are they gonna find? Are they going to find someone that's trying to point them to Christ and repentance and the tradition and the beauty of the no. church and, and wisdom? No. Are they going to find like another ideologue that's using the church as one more kind of like iron cross on their jacket? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, I'm not, I'm not into that. Well, if, if what's this, what, what this is bringing up for me is that I, I can genuinely say that at, any point in my adult life even when i was the most like actively engaged with the demonic right even if i was the even at that time had somebody presented orthodoxy to me as the system that it is in the way that it was in the way that it came to me and in the way that that you helped me father and that that you came into my life and catechized me to help me to understand what orthodoxy was I would have come to orthodoxy at any one of those points in my life, because exactly as you say, it wasn't so much that I was so interested in the left-hand path, so interested in the occult, so interested in the demonic. It, it wasn't about that. It was that I was searching for the truth, and this was what I was finding that was the closest to it. Anything that I knew that was where I saw Christianity and my understanding of Christianity was that it was so far from the truth. And which is the reason why, like, I know that we've said like, well, we're, we're, we're getting on Catholics about this or whatever, but you know, I, I was baptized Catholic. I'm half Mexican, right? So it's not like I wasn't exposed to Catholicism. So people in my family are like, my uncle who baptized me was a, Je was a Jesuit priest. You know, his, his sister, who's like very, very close family friend, she's like very involved with the Catholic church. And the fact of the matter is, there was nothing there in terms of my search, nothing, nothing. And so it's like, it is important. It is important to like, for us to just say, there's not a difference. I'm like, no, I'm telling you, like, there is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I can't articulate. I can't articulate what that difference is. I don't have the theological background. I don't have the historical and doctrinal background. All I have is the background of I've been heavily exposed to Catholicism. And I was on a deep spiritual search and I, there was more truth in the demonic and the left-hand path than I saw in Catholicism. But mm -hmm. the second that orthodoxy was presented to me, I immediately saw that there was the most truth in that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, where's, there's clearly there's a difference. <laughs> right. Like right. it's, it, you may say, oh, the doctrinal difference is this, but it's like, but how that manifests, the fruits of that is like, for me, the most biggest and most important thing I could possibly imagine. Well, I mean, to be frank, Sabrina, it isn't just for you. And again, like that's, I mean, that's, it's, there's an interesting, I just made a kind of interesting observation. I think what you would, what you initially responded to was the power in the occult. There's power there. Absolutely. And, well, and it's real and it's, it's real. real. There's, it's objectively the real, yes. It, it, there's real power there. And then what's interesting is with orthodoxy, there's real power there and truth. It's like, 
right, right, the, right, right. Yes, is, yes, yes. And like that, that's that's the thing. There's real power and real truth. And again, you know, it's I guess for some people they think it's it's anecdotal, but when you look at the fact that there are people who like all the people I know, again, I've mentioned these people, but you know, like again, um, I had one spiritual child who was a Benedictine. Um, I have another one who's a non, you know, I, I, I like their experiences were not so much, it, they were more of like being broken hearted over Rome. They're, right? But guess what? What's kept them? What, what kept them orthodox? It was, it was the truth. It was the fullness of truth. It was the power to transform them. You, you understand what I'm saying? And, and I think that's, I think, again, this is the thing. It isn't just one, there, there's, there's going to be two sides to it. And the reality of the change that happens in you, it's something that I think we need to really kind of keep bringing forward but we need to keep bringing it forward in the right way. You know what I mean? We need to bring it forward in the right way because there are people who, um, there are people who have come from, you know, being evangelical to Catholicism. They're like, oh, this is great for a period of time, but it's just like, they aren't, they, I, they're still hungering and thirsting. And, and those people, those are people I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I don't want to lose those people if that makes sense. I want those people to know, like, it's good what you found, but like, there's more, there, there's more. And I, I just think that's important because, you know, I don't see Rome pulling in, <laughs> you know, there's, there isn't going to be some last minute, like pulling the plane up from the, you know, pulling it up from the, from the, from the dive bomb, like. Well, they did say Russia was provoked. The Pope did say that Russia might have been provoked. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Probably not, though. I'm going to go on well, record. A, a, bro- a broken clock is right twice a day. Amen. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's, that's what it's better, better said. Yeah. You guys are weird for getting into the occult. I'll say that. Some of us never got into the occult. Some of us just got really into Pokemon. I'll say and that. good for you, by the way. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, I think there's a lot more people. What you learn when you're in the occult is that there's a lot more people in the occult than realize. know they're in the occult. Right. <laughs> there's a lot more people who are doing the yeah. will of yeah. the demons, but they don't think it's demons whose will they're doing. And I'm sorry, I'm on a kick right now with them, which is a good kick. It's a kick. I'm going to keep kicking. But the Metropolitan. <sighs> neophytus neophytus i'm never gonna remember that but he did you watch his video on yoga Hmm. oh oh man this is a good one so i'll I'll summarize real quick you should still watch the video but essentially there was a guy somebody asked him about yoga and essentially there was a guy whose burden was that he was incredibly handsome and that he attracted a lot of women and so he went to a couple of priests and the priests were like, didn't really do anything for him. So eventually he went to Metropolitan and um, was like, uh, I have found that uh, a form of peace that I am getting is from yoga. I've just, you know, it just seems to be calming my inner strife, you know, all this different kind of stuff. And uh, I don't have the exact quote. I could probably find it really quick, but uh, the gifts from the devil are cheap is what he told him. Like the gifts of the devil are cheap. Um, and then, you know, uh, as, as they say in Greek, shed a little blood, you know, shed a little blood. So I've, eventually like Metropolitan said, who's teaching you? And, uh, he said, you know, this, this woman, um, and he was like, uh, well, bring her in, talk to me. And, um, if she can convince me that it's innocent, then I'll do it too. You know, it's not a big deal. Um, but he was like, I knew what I was doing. So they come in, they sit down together. And essentially, like he asked her, he's like, well, are you Orthodox? He's like, no, I'm Protestant. And uh, the woman said this, the guy is Orthodox. Um, and he's like, oh, OK. He's like, well, do you feel like you had the discernment between um, to, to discern if some if an angel or a demon is visiting you? Uh, and she's like, oh, I'm not so sure that I do. He's like, well, then why do you continue to do this? And he's like, well, it brings me peace. And actually, I've seen some light 
well, I'm doing it. He's like, well, this is a sure sign that, that Satan has visited you is what he said to her. And I was like, oh, like, yes. And he was like, this is a sure sign that Satan has visited you. And um, eventually, like, he was like, I'm not sure you do have that discernment. And um, then she started to get like real agitated. And then he, he, maybe he said, I can't remember. He's like, I noticed she'd been agitated this entire time. He's like, are you okay? And she's like, no, I feel really weird in this office. Like, I don't know what powers you have, but they're, I, they feel very weird to me. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I have no power. I have, I'm a weak old man. He's like, there's a saint's relic right here. There's like, there's, um, there's unction over here. Um, and then there's icons behind me. If you're responding to anything, you're responding negatively to these things. And he's like, then he kind of squared up with her. He's like, I want you to admit the only reason you're doing yoga with this young man is because you're attracted to him. I want you to admit that. And she's like, that's absolutely true. And he was like, yep, okay, we're done. And then like the guy repented, stopped doing yoga. And it's, it's, there's more to it, but it's like this incredible story of just like recognizing like, and this is part of this problem that father was saying is, is like, look at the fruits of this whole thing is like the fruits of this whole thing of that I kept running into was you would have Christians that were into this like new agey stuff that didn't re that at the time I thought was there's okay this is fine I guess but like asking to be visited in dreams and stuff like that or like give me a sign if this leaf falls off of this tree and lands in this puddle then that's you telling me that it's okay for me to divorce my husband or something like that. Like I've literally run into this before. This is this problem. And one of them was actually, if I find a four leaf clover, I will divorce my husband. Never found a four leaf clover, but had a dream about a four leaf clover. And then the divorce proceeded. Like I've literally, this is something that I've known has happened within the last year. And it's just like, this is the problem. Ultimately, I think with when you give the i guess the the tesseract to people who don't know what to do with it you know they they're given the responsibility they're given the all of the power but none of the responsibility yeah so like they just they'll believe you know, anything you know just i don't know forgive me everybody i, I don't know I, I just want to throw out one little juicy tidbit but like um like the jesus prayer you know like people should be careful. People should be careful. Like you're putting up an antenna mm. and you know, you're not prepared. You're not getting guidance. It's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous, you know? So it's, it's just another reason like this, this whole thing, why the ecumenical dialogue is also like, we have to be very circumspect. Like, we got to, we just got to put out the right stuff there, you know, keep it simple uh, and keep it, keep it loving, you know, stick to those things that, um, stick to, stick to those things that aren't, you know, kind of family secrets, you know what I mean? Um, I think Father Thomas Hopko talked about this once. It's like, you know, which I agree with, you know, like talk about the history of the church, the scriptures, you know, Christ, but like, uh, certain things we shouldn't talk about. Don't talk about, you know, don't talk about the mother of God. Hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, don't talk about communion. You know, I'm not speaking of mysteries tonight, enemies. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm personally, for me personally, I'm not, I'm not one that's going to discuss the Jesus prayer with someone. You know, in, in the sense of like affirming them, like, yeah. You know, you're not orthodox and you don't have a guide and this and that. Yeah, go ahead. Jesus prayer is great. You'll get peace. I'm not that guy. Because you're setting someone up, you know? Um, and, and it's those things you got to be careful. Like, we should share the faith. We should talk about the experience of people that are genuinely searching for Christ, genuinely searching for truth. And those who are Christians, quote unquote, we need, we should share with like, hey, we have the fullness. Come on over. We should, we should do that. Right, we have to do it with the right measure. Yes, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, instead of a spoon, you're using a knife. Instead of like here, taste a little bit. You're like, ah, gotcha, gotcha, <laughs> yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So. Do that. All right, gentlemen. Does anybody have 
a saint or you know something that they want to they want to talk about because otherwise I don't know if we've talked about him before. There's a saint that I know Father likes talking about, and I like hearing about. That's Go ahead. Uh, saint Nicetus. We've talked a little bit about Saint Nicetus before. Yeah, but I think we've talked a little bit, but we. Yeah, that's a great that's a great saint, especially considering the yoga story. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so, I'm uh, waiting for Father to engage about saint nasid unless you want me to tell a story because i'm i don't want to tell the story i i, I mean <laughs> you, you, he is one of your son's saints so. he is he is he is um so saint nasitas who became the bishop of novgorod um wonderful saint he was um a monastic and he had desired to um go off into uh, seclusion, be a hermit, which is only for the advanced. And uh, he's basically forbidden to not do that. Um, he's forbidden to do that. To not, basically like you, you, it's not, you're not at that stage yet to go off and, and to do your thing. Sure. You know? so, and this was his abbot or his spiritual father or how does, yeah. Yeah, his okay. abbot, his abbot. And so, uh, he finds himself doing this, and as he's doing it, one night, you know, he's asceticizing in his cave, and, and one night, um, an angel appears to him. Uh, the room, the room fills with light, and appears to him. Says, you know, basically, uh, Nasitas, you know, God has seen you, and, and uh, you know, what would you ask? What would you ask? And he says, you know, I want prayer. So the angel says to him, Well, uh, I will appear at night. And I will pray, uh, and as I pray for you um, in your stead, basically, um, you study the scriptures. He had a co he had a copy of the Old, Old Testament scriptures. So the seed is like, okay, you know. So at night, the angel would come, stand in the corner, the room fills light, lift up his hands and pray, and the seed is study. So time goes by, and he eventually finds himself being uh, going out and. He's speaking to, you know, village folk and the word gets back to his abbot and some of the brethren. They're like, oh, you know, basically who's the local, who's the new, who's the new elder? And they go and lo and behold, they see that Nesitas is, you know, giving words of knowledge, all this stuff. But the Holy Spirit gives the abbot discernment and he, know, and he recognizes that actually Nesitas is in delusion because he's only quoting from the Old Testament, never, never from the gospel. But he is able to like, you know, give prophetic words and give utterances of knowledge, all this stuff. And so, you know, they grab him and, you know, basically they give him exorcism and the seed is delivered from this delusion. And it was a demon. And it wasn't an angel, it was a demon that came to him, an angel of light. Behold, even the devil comes as an angel of light. But the great word, the, the, but the see this is able to repent and eventually become an actual wonder working saint. He, he's able to, he becomes a bishop, he becomes a wonder working saint. And I love the story of Saint Lucita so much for, for two reasons, obviously. Probably the biggest spiritual principle that, that awakened in me um, at the, in my early stages of coming orthodoxy was this understanding of prelist. Mm -hmm. of being in spiritual delusion mm -hmm. thinking you're more spiritually advanced than you are it's been the thing that's characterized my whole my whole time in the church and it's been one of the greatest gifts to me and it's another reason why it's like pentecostalism is so dangerous like everything outside the church is so dangerous all of it's dangerous because no none of them have this built into them Right, but it's built into orthodoxy. This idea of of yeah. and delusion, you know. And the other thing I love about it is that, um, again, hope and repentance. You know, like it, it's it, it's a it's a story that resolves beautifully, and that he he truly is now able to have genuine gifts from God, you know, through his repentance. Yeah. I, I know that one of the things there's someone that's very close to me that 
um, was approaching the church and maybe they still are, I'm not sure, but they, one of the things they, I was talking to him on the phone. I could almost like hear their voice shaking a little bit. Um, and I was talking to him on the phone and they said like, but what about all of the, because they're a lifelong Protestant, like what about all the experiences, you know, that I've had with God, are they all like thrown out the window? And I don't know if I was right. And I, I don't know. What's that? I, I told her that um, maybe some of them are true, but the that and maybe some of them are false, maybe some of them are an illusion. But the fact that you're questioning this means you're getting closer to Christ. And not only that, but with time, you'll be able to in discernment and prayer, you might be able to suss some of those experiences out because that's been my personal experience that there have been times there was a time in which the most immeasurable most tangible and i don't know if that was the correct answer but you know i i more or less just told him like told her get closer to the church and that stuff will become more apparent it'll become more apparent because i don't know about you guys i'm sure you guys but can you say can you say something because yeah. i just want to make sure everyone hears this there's a solid process if someone's not orthodox and they have this question but like well what is it because that that's i had the same question myself it's real, it's real simple, but it's not easy. Find a parish, find a priest, put yourself in, in proper obedience. And what you'll find is in time with that guidance, right? It's not a matter of maybe, you will be given the opportunities to discern and to separate the worthless and the precious. I get yes. it. Because what happens is you have experiences and then in time, you know, you're tested, you're refined, all that stuff begins to happen, but you're able to then begin to like read the fathers, read the lives of the saints. And then in time, you're like, okay, this experience reminds me of this is something I experienced with God before. Okay, you talk to your priests. He's like, yeah, that's valid. Okay, great. This is maybe this. You talk to the priest, like, no, that's, you know, okay, great. I throw that out. Yeah. That's in a nutshell what will happen. Things start it, to feel a little weird later on. Sorry, if I, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. Yeah. Some of the experiences, quote unquote, like experiences I have with God start to feel a little, to yeah. use a word that a brother from the church said to me one time when we were talking about this very thing. He's like, it starts to feel a little demon y. And it's like, yeah, that I would absolutely say that that is a thing. And because I struggle with that, because one of the biggest moments I had of just straight up unabashed what I thought, well, I forgave someone and it was not from me. And this is during some of my worst days. Like this is some of my most, not the most, but I was still wholeheartedly in my alcoholism. Um, And I had this like experience of just, of what I, I, the story is different, but what I thought that they had done to me was pretty unforgivable. And I remember looking at them and I know from a specific time, I remember what she was wearing. I remember like the day and everything, the weather of like feeling this like unbelievable, like forgiveness towards her. And I've gone through different experiences through my walk. Uh, uh, that sounds Protestant. <laughs> through my through getting closer to Christ, I've gone my through. Journey. Yeah. Yeah. My journey, my journey to Mordor, like that, like I have no, that was delusion. No, that was real. No, that was delusion. No, that was real. And I, I've settled more or less on it was real tinged with my own sinfulness because like immediately that forgiveness led to more sin, like on my part, but like the forgiveness I felt towards her was real. And like, again, the Holy Spirit is working with everybody, but only dwells within the baptized. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, there are, and, you know, my mom says that God spoke to her to name me Andrew, that, you know, that like Andrew was someone that was in so far, I mean, that's either God working with someone's delusion or, I mean, one of the things that Andrew's always depicted with in iconography is having messy hair. 
And that's been a staple of my entire life. My entire life, I've always been known as having someone who's just had like unmessy, messy, unruly hair. And like, that's something that came like organically to me. That was something that like, you know, I, I mean, maybe I'm looking too much into something, but as like symbolism, you know, as I start to get it more and more, it's, you know, it's another one of those things that's still up in the air, but like it's, it was very clear to me and to everyone else from the moment that I became a catechumen, St. Andrew was my saint, like without a doubt, like my priest never asked me, like, who do you want your saint to be? He was like, no, it's St. Andrew. Right. Like, that's your saint. And I was like, okay, cool. And St. Andrew so was someone I really liked from the Bible because he had my name. And when I was a kid, I was like, oh, there's an Andrew in there. And, you know, so it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, I don't know. I'm trying not to fall into my like legalism and say, no, it can only happen on these certain set of circumstances. Yeah, but... no, no, no. God does whatever he wants. Exactly. But we yeah. have to test the spirits, as the scripture says. You got to test the spirit. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Cyprian, any, any, any thoughts? No. It's raining. Well, I, 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 yeah, I'm in the middle of a typhoon, I think. Maybe our first one. Or at least it's a tropical storm. So, yeah, I've just been sitting here, like, getting blown around. <laughs> you can probably see the rain blowing in on my face from the sides. And we have our, we have our, we're hosting the Pacific mini games. We're hosting, like, the regional Olympics. And the opening ceremony is tonight. All, everybody flew in. So I'm like, oh, this is not going to happen. <laughs> um, it's going to be interesting. I have nothing. I have nothing. I think it was all wonderful. You had Thor. You have Thor. Crazy. <laughs> I, I I had to say it. I had to say it because I That's had crazy. to have a recording of it. I had to have a recording of that moment. <laughs> For prosperity. I'm into it. I'm totally into exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Well, I think that's going to be it for us tonight, gentlemen. Um, thank you. I'll plug the podcast. Uh, we also, I, I guess I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. We switched our recording day. So these are going to start coming out later in the week. Um, but uh, so it's usually things came out on Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it'll be probably at the weekend now over the weekend. No, I could, it can come out at the same. Why it can come out the same. Oh, we're going to be a week behind. Yeah. Well, yeah. It'll be the, it'll be the weekend. It'll be the yeah, weekend. Yeah. Well, not only that, but we usually released it on Wednesday and we're not recording until right. after Wednesday anymore. That's right. So yep. it'll be released consistently again. It'll be released later in the week. So, um, and then we are talking about merch. Nothing is yep. definite. Nothing is, you know, is I, I don't know if we've taken any steps forward in that direction, but we have certainly broached the subject. Certainly. Um, you know what? I think I'm the first the first about? shirt the first shirt is probably coming very soon. Okay. I, I'm curious, what would people like to see? Do they want? Oh yeah. Do they want cozies for their coffee cups or their beer beers? Mm -hmm. You know, like do they want handkerchiefs? Uh, Somebody said. Uh, I was looking for a comment when we were recording just now. I was looking for something and somebody said he wants a, a, a father's hat like that you're wearing right now, but with like a royal path like thing on it or something like that. And I was like, I, I, you know, I don't know about that, but we'll see if there's anything specific. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if there's anything specific anybody wants, I mean, imagine if we make shirts, we'll make like 15 of them or something like that because I, can't... I i think what i'll probably do is i'll do like a go to like a teespring or something like that okay. we'll put it on there and then people can decide if they want mugs if they want you know yeah. i'll try to set it up with one of those kind of uh drop shipper type of situations so that yeah. people can get and we'll just pick and choose what people want what we offer yeah i think mugs and shirts for sure yeah but i think people would be down with that and then again reach out to us if you want to i have not checked the royal path email in like four months but i will check i'll start checking it if you guys want to reach out to us individually please do uh, it doesn't have to be a comment because i know sometimes the comments the questions get lost in there but if you have something please feel free to reach out to us um otherwise i still got the playlist going uh for anybody that wants to check that out and i think that's it so thanks for having a good night Bye bye